Hi everybody, welcome back to Parsnips and Parsimony. My name is Janelle and this video is going to be what's in my birth kit for having a home birth. If you haven't watched my pregnancy updates, I'll go ahead and put a link to that playlist down in the description below. We are currently expecting baby number eight. I am 36 weeks pregnant and I have almost everything together for my birth kit to have a home birth. My midwife likes to have um, specific items for the birth. There are some items that I've added to the kit because this is my fifth home birth. I, there's just certain things that I know that work and don't work quite so well for me. So I'm gonna go ahead and show you what's in my birth kit. So my midwife likes to use radiantbelly.com. I'll go ahead and put a link in the description for that if you wanna check out that site. So we have multiple chucks, if you're not familiar with these. These are like puppy pads. We use them in the hospital. They have the absorbent side, but the waterproof backing. So she has several of these. In fact, I have many of these left over from my past birth. Sometimes you use them all, sometimes you don't. Uh, you just, it's one of those things, it just depends on um, how messy it is. So there's a whole stash of those. So those are the disposable chucks. Then these are like just really large, um, sort of like depends, really huge depends, which are really great for right after the birth in the first 24 hours. Just helps kind of keep everything nice and clean. And then I have five, again, of, these are a little bit smaller, um, but again, just really helps control the bleeding in case you're a heavy bleeder, things like that. Now, this doesn't take the place of having your own Kotex pads and things like that. I still have to have those myself, um, but this is just to get me through the first 24 hours. And then the wonderful Perry bottle comes with the kit, and these are just some more um, pads and things like that. I really found that you can't have too many of those. There's a whole package here of gloves for my midwife. And then two of my favorite things, and I make sure that I always order these. I know you can make these yourself, but these are instant perineal cold packs. So what it is, is it's a pad, but with a cold pack inside that, just like those instant cold packs, you're gonna smash it and then you can use this right after the birth. I found that these help a lot with swelling, particularly those the first um, six hours. So I picked up two of those, just because that's about what you need to get through. And then my midwife's preference are these cord rings. If you've never seen one of these, these are really cool. They used to be cord clamps, and you can, most doctors use cord clamps, but this isn't nearly as messy and it's just easier afterwards. So you put it on the umbilical cord and then you take, There's. it almost looks like a rubber band, and then you take that plastic piece off and you're left with the rubber band that just pretty much uh, clamps down on the umbilical cord. And it really makes for a nice, clean, easy way to keep the umbilical cord stump clean for the next week or so. We also have the wonderful tape measure to see how big the baby is. And then this is Arnica. If you've never used Arnica Montana in a, in a birth, these are amazing. It helps with muscle bruising and swelling and things like that. And oh, it makes life so much better. It also helps with hemorrhoids. Uh, these things are liquid gold. Um, these, This one is little pellets like little sugar pellets they taste just like sugar and i will probably go through this entire bottle in the first 24 to 48 hours and then just some basic supplies a straw this is the kit my midwife has put together emergency again if you're having issues with energy and things like this she likes to have that on hand and then some lanolin for breastfeeding uh, a couple gauze pads then, uh, <laughs> out of all things, a trash bag, and then a Ziploc bag, and then this is the last item, and this is the clean print foot printer. So instead of using a ink pad on your baby's foot and turning the baby's foot all black, this actually makes no stains. You push the ink through on the foot, and the foot ink goes directly on the paper very very cool i love this It's called the clean print foot printer 
absolutely love those and I think that's just one of the best things in the kit personally but so that's the entire birth kit that my midwife has put together through radiantbelly.com when I had Lillian I didn't purchase the radiant belly kit that time because I had a lot of those supplies left over from when I had grace but because I used all of those with Lillian I was a little on the low side so I just went ahead for my sanity and bought the kit the entire kit was fifty three dollars and twenty cents so really cheap for having a baby so that is the basic kit now there's other things that I've collected for the birth one of them being a roll of paper towels always good for unforeseen masses and then I have after the birth fuzzy socks it's winter time here and I'm not going to be wearing shoes probably won't be wearing slippers I usually stay just in my room so I like to keep my feet warm and this was actually a baby shower present some fuzzy socks for mom so I have that in my birth kit so afterwards I can use that and then depending on when I deliver I have um, just a few clothing items I have a shirt here for afterwards just to kind of keep my upper part warm and then I also have my blood pressure cuff she brings her own but I like to keep an eye on my own blood pressure after she leaves just in case I feel funny or something like that so I have that right in my birth kit and then one of the items that I recommend everyone get, whether you're having a home birth or whether you're just having kids, this is the number one lifesaver for me. And these are, if you've never seen these, these are hospital chucks, um, chuck pads, absorbent pads, bed pads, however you want to call them. Uh, these are what you have usually in the hospital and they lay them on the bed. I use these for vomiting kids. I use them for potty training kids. I use them for when we're changing a newborn and they're pretty inconsistent with, <laughs> you never know if they're going to pee while their diaper's off. Things like that. And the beauty about them is you just throw them in the wash. And these have gone through all the last three home births. And it'll be this one as well. And I've used them for potty training and I don't know how much vomit I've used these for. They are the best thing to have in your house if you have kids. They're better than terry towels because they have the, the protective backing so nothing goes through them. And I just picked them up off of Amazon. I'll put the link in the description below because they are amazing. I think everyone should have at least four if you've got kids. It just it really helps save a lot of furniture and your bedding and all that good stuff. I also have, um, this is new, I haven't had this one for any of the other babies, but this is the postpartum um, belly belt. And I had with my other kids a diastasis recti, if you're not familiar with that, that's the abdominal separation um, of your abdominal muscles. and binding them. I know there's a lot of controversy whether you should bind them or not, but I do find that by just helping me with that support, I'm not doing the hunched over thing while I'm trying to nurse. And it just sort of helps keep a lot of that postpartum bleeding down the cramping because the uterus is staying nice and tight. And a lot of the time, the reason why I get the pain, the afterbirth pains, you guys are probably pretty familiar with them if you've had kids or any number of kids, is because that uterus gets lax and then it starts to bleed or it forms a clot and then when you start breastfeeding, it clamps back down and that's when you get those awful, awful cramps. So it, with past kids, I've used something similar just to keep the abdominal muscles pulled together so I can keep the uterus tight and really help reduce the bleeding and the cramping. This particular brand is for different days. So you have day one, which is a looser band, and then like day three, you tighten it up a little bit more. Hopefully this will work really well and I'm looking forward to trying out this new brand. Then I have a laundry basket here, all full of towels and washcloths and I don't think there's anything else in here except towels and washcloths and burp cloths or receiving blankets. So what I did, everything's been washed and it stays in the laundry basket. You can see my stack of receiving blankets and I have another pile that I have next to my rocking chair of receiving blankets that I use for burp cloths and things like that. 
So the only thing that I'm missing in this kit is the Thermacare wraps. If you're not familiar with the Thermacare heat wraps, those are the pads that they actually sell for um, back and mus muscle issues. I am <laughs> using them actually for the cramping afterwards. Instead of using a heating pad, I found the Thermacare wraps work really well. I buy a two pack. I put, usually put it on right after delivery and I keep it on for about 12 hours and then depending on how I'm feeling I either put it put another one on or I leave it off but it just it's very comforting it's very soothing and it seems to help with the overall recovery process but I forgot those when I went to Walmart last week so I need to go and still pick those up before the baby is born other than that I have the bedding all set for the baby I have blankets for the baby I have lots of Kotex pads for myself I also have a stash of snacks, um, high protein snacks and such. Not that I will actually use them during the birth, but what I have found after the birth is I'm usually starving, absolutely starving. I gave birth to Grace. I actually, when I was in labor, made a groaning cake. That was like the best thing after because as soon as I delivered and I got all tucked into bed and I was all situated with the baby, I remember saying, I can have my groaning cake now. And it was fabulous. It's full of fruit and just really good, yummy things that are good after working so hard of having a baby. I'm hoping to do that again as long as nobody has a stomach bug and this baby doesn't come roaring through here at lightning speed. After the first 24 hours, it's hard for me to be moving around. I usually do not go downstairs. We live on um, a multi-floor house and I make it a habit not to go downstairs at least for the first three days of after having a baby. Just like if you were in a hospital, you would stay in and recover. I feel like that's really, really important when you're having a baby. So I just stay in my room. I have uh, three very large, I have a Tervis and two other very large water bottles that I'm going to fill up first thing in the morning. And then hopefully I will have a quantity of water to keep me through throughout the day and also with my pile of snacks. I'm also putting together a list of some freezer foods that the kids can bring up to me that makes it really simple. And those include some oatmeal cups, cheese sticks, hard boiled eggs, apples with just peanut butter, yogurt, hummus, carrots, cucumbers. Again, we're looking at really high nutrient dense foods. Um, I have on the agenda to make some homemade granola bars, uh, muffins. Again, the high protein muffins are really good afterwards when you're trying to recover. I'm thinking the kids can just grab one and say, here, mom, here's a muffin. Here's an apple. You have, you have some food. I would like to make some beef jerky. I have some, but it's not going to be enough to get me through very far. So I want to make some beef jerky, nuts, and then some lactation cookies. I do plan on breastfeeding this baby. My last experience with breastfeeding my last baby was more challenging because I ended up, because I had a stomach bug that put me into labor, I was already kind of behind the eight ball with dehydration and things like that. And so I really never had a good chance to get my milk supply established like I normally do. So I'm hoping to have some of those lactation cookies already in the freezer, ready to go. And again, the kids can just pull them out and bring them up to me, trying to keep this really, really simple and easy while I'm at a commission for three days. That's what's in my birth kit. That's sort of what my birth plan is. If you haven't subscribed to our channel, please do so because we are planning on filming the birth right here. It should be up within a couple days afterwards. And if you're not following on if you're not following me on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, uh, make sure you do that because that's probably where I will post when I go into labor. That's what I've done with the other kids. I post it there and let you guys know, hey, it looks like it's gonna be baby time. So kind of a fun place to hang out the next four weeks. As always, thank you so much for watching. I hope this helps you if you're working towards putting together your own birth kit. Hopefully this gives you a couple ideas on what you may need at home. And we will see you for our next video. Bye.